we have a, a very good friend of mine, Prince Badi, a pro fighter, couple title belts, and we know each other a very long time. He's from the street, beginning of his, his uh, life, he was in prisons. So uh, he's going to talk to, to us about the streets. He's from Camden, big fighter known at the beginning of his career at the Blue Horizon of Philadelphia. Later on, he was a training partner of Bernard Hopkins and Tony Tarver. And uh, he used to fight on my property, train there with the, uh, David Reed, uh, Bobby Chez, a couple other fighters. He had a great career in the ring, out of the ring. And right now he's doing a lot of things with the young guys and the kids. And uh, this is Prince Badi, everybody, Ajamu. Hey, Prince. Hey, how you, how you doing, Johnny? How you doing, Gene? What's going on, Prince, man? It's nice to meet you, man. Oh, man. So, Definitely mutual. Um, so, Prince, I'm gonna jo- I want to jump into it. And uh, the people listening, like, uh, very interested in this stuff. And you come from a, a different bra- background. So uh, if you like to just um, kind of elaborate a little bit on, you know, your upbringing and, you know, maybe the jails you're in and a little bit about your life. Of course. Of course, was as it was already stated by Johnny, you know, he mentioned about me being from Camden. Uh, from growing up in Camden, I was always, I was a street fighter initially. And, you know, from fighting in the streets, I got into a fight with a guy outside of a barbershop. And the owner of the barbershop happened to be a trainer of the local boys club there. So he came out, broke the fight up and told us, that if we wanted to do it like real men, we would come in the gym and, and, and finish our, settle our differences. So, you know, I went in the gym, me and the other guy, he was, the other guy was older than me, so, and when you're young, it makes a big difference. So, he was only older than me by two or three years. But when we went into the gym, the guy, he bust my lip, I bust his nose, and the, the, um, the gym owner, the gym trainer, his name is Jimmy Fortune. He still run. He still has a barbershop right there on Martin Pike, East Camden. Uh, he told me, he said, you know, I should I should come back to the gym when everybody is starting to come back and train. He said he thought that I'm, you know, I may have a future in it. So I came back. He didn't train me, but he started sending me to the store for starters. And then I, you know, every day I would look forward to going to the store for him. So he started training me because I kept watching, kept watching. Then we started training. I have to cut you off one second now. In the street, you were known as a knockout artist. You were beating guys up all over the place before you were a boxer, I'm sure, right? Before I was a boxer, yep. And then I started fighting grown men when I was 14 going on 15. Wow. And from then, from I, well, I got into a situation with a kid at school, and he went home and he got his dad. <laughs> so his dad, his dad walked him back up to the school because the school, because he left school early to, and his dad was trying to figure out why did he come home so early. So we finally got it out of him that he was running from me. So he came back. He brought, him, he brought his son back up to the school to confront me. And I was, and I had all my boys and everything. There was about 30 of us. And, you know, his dad was like, yo, what's the problem? I said, listen, I don't owe you no explanation. And don't talk to me like that. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, hold up, hold up. So he put his hands up. As soon as he put his he put his hands up like to try to say hold up, I floored him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so everybody's like, whoa, 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 yo, you you knocked his dad out, man. That's crazy, you crazy. I said, Yeah, but he put his hands up and I didn't know what he was gonna do. And I wasn't trying to find out. Right. I mean, so you know, long, long, long story short, that's how you know word really got out, you know what I mean? That, you know, I wouldn't hesitate, I was on go. That's right. what they call it around my way. When you'll fight at the drop of a dime, they call you someone that's on go. So after that, uh, you know, the school got involved. Long story short, you know, I wind up going going away, getting locked up as a juvenile. Wow. I got sent to the gym, uh, training school for boys. About 18 months, I came out. About nine months, and then I went away to prison. So you, we're talking about in the span of Maybe 11 and a half years. I did 10 years. Wow. What kind of charges were you trying to get away on? Uh, what were some of the charges, you don't mind me asking? What were some of your, well, your charges? When I, when I, when I, uh, the charges I got hit with when I got waved up to an adult, I was still a juvenile. I was charged as a juvenile. But finally, when the case got pleaded out, I was an adult. But the charges I got hit with 
was the RICO Act. Wow. Yeah, and I was I was charged as the ringleader. Wow. In the RICO case, yeah, I was charged as the ringleader in the RICO case, and then that's when I went away for the remaining, or for those, for those that little stretch of time I did. Hey, Prince, for the guys that don't know, you know, obviously you're growing up in Camden, and we know per capita it's probably one of the biggest murdering uh, capitals in the in any, any state per capita. And uh, actually, we, you know, me and you had a mutual friend. He was one of my cellmates in Camden, Ali Garrett at the time, back in the yep. early 90s. He was also a fighter. And I think in my personal opinion, he would have had some career if uh, he didn't get locked up. So, you know... And, Absolutely. Without a doubt, he was one of the, he, he was really good with his hands. But what people don't know about you that I know is in, in the boxing world, uh, you were some body puncher. I mean, you had hands to the body that most guys didn't go to the body. And when we were training with Bernard Hopkins in the firehouse down in Philly, when we were in the locker room, he told me at that time, you weren't in the locker room with us. You were out still training out in, in the ring. You were, you were still, I don't, I don't remember you hitting the mid, so you jump a rope. And he said to me, this has got to be one of the best fighters I've ever been in the ring with in my life. He's some body puncher. Uh, he says, this guy is going to be a big champion. And when Bernardo told me that, and the people that don't know who Bernard Hopkins is became the middleweight champ. Matter of fact, we got him the first room in Atlantic City, if you remember, because Don King had him blackballed. And, uh, you know, he asked us to get him to get him a room in Atlantic City. And we were shocked that he couldn't get a room at that time. But he, he gave you props that... Uh, most guys would never realize and, and I, I think that you really through your career, your biggest fight that I think people really noticed you, but you blew out your kidney and people didn't know that is against Roy Jones Jr. I mean, because that first round you took it to him and then you got sick during the fight that people didn't know about. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, hey, is Roy, jo Roy Jones is lightning fast, huh? Yeah, he's lightning fast. We, you know, we still keep in touch, you know what I mean? But he's lightning fast. That was, that was the main thing he used against me. It really wasn't his power. He has sharp power, but he was faster than he was strong to me. Super fast, right? That was his... Uh, yeah, because he was so fast that when he hit you, you didn't know where, you never seen it coming. So it's almost like when he hit you, you, used to feel, you feel like you're being snuck. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's yeah. what it feels like. He's That's like he, you're getting caught off guard. So that's how, to me, that's where he developed his power from. But as far as strength, pound for pound, he'll tell you I was stronger than him. Well, everybody that was in the ring with you, I mean, Sugar Shane Mosey obviously was just a smaller guy, very fast. And uh, all these guys, there isn't a guy they didn't say, uh, you had unbelievably deceiving strength inside the ring that people really didn't see. And Bobby Chez, for people that don't know, was a three-time champ. He was a Showtime commentator. He's a very good friend of ours, and uh, he said the same thing about you. You're very deceptive and, uh, in the ring. And, and for the people that don't know you, it's because you've been humble your whole life. I mean, that's you would never know, and you know this coming from the streets of Camden with all the guys that uh, killing and guns. and they, You were always a quiet guy. You were a quiet guy and uh, well-respected in the street because how tough you were. And uh, and your know, people deceive sometimes that quietness is something else, and don't realize the guys that are quiet are very secure with themselves. And uh, you, I mean, you your whole family, I believe a couple of your kids and your brother, right, were, were, were killed in the street. Yes, I had uh, three brothers murdered in the street. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All three of them murdered by gun. And uh, they all could box. They all could handle themselves very well. Yeah. Yeah. But they were all they were all shot down in the streets of Camden. Wow. So one of the one of the things we, you know what we're doing and you you advocate for it. Denny does. I mean, I'm down in you know I come to see you guys a couple of times in Florence uh, Street Gym in Camden. And you know, what people don't know about you is not only you're tough, you've you, you've been involved in the street your whole life, prisons, but the way you uh you believe in uh, your faith. And you believe in helping these young kids not to follow what we were into or what Gene was into. And uh, tell us about what you're doing as far as, you know, the word spreading to kids to stay off these streets. Oh, uh, you know, a lot of times um, I'm, I'm called and scheduled from time to time to go to different youth centers and, and speak to a lot of the young ones. 
and I've been to schools speaking to the young ones. And on a regular, when 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 the the pandemic uh, alarm wasn't going on, I was going to the gym every day, working with children from all over who came to our gym on Florence Street. And um, I, I mean, when I talk, I got a lot of their attention. You know what I mean? A lot of them could pretty much relate to where where I'm coming from, based on where I've been and based on what they're going through. So I, I get an opportunity to get through in a lot of, in, in a lot of ways that maybe their parents may not get through. You know what I'm saying? I guess they feel like we speak sort of the same language. You know what I mean? So with you know with that being the case, you know it, it opens up other uh, other opportunities for people to ask me to come through. Maybe you could talk to my son. Maybe you can come to the church. Maybe you could speak to the uh, the youth there. You know, we heard about you. You know, would you be interested in coming? And that's a lot of that has been going on. So throughout the years here, I've been quite a few places and spoke to quite a few crowds of, of youth, uh, different places, and have be, even been asking, asked to go on tour with other uh, uh, athletes and other entertainers, you know what I mean, on, on uh, speaking engagements. Yeah. Hey, Gene. Yeah. yeah. Going, I don't know if you know Camden like Prince and me do. And and uh, hey, Prince, were you with me when we were Joe Frazier down Atlantic City? Did you know Joe with me or no? So yeah, yeah. You, you were down there with me, right? So yep. what, what a lot of these guys don't realize when you see a lot of fighters, and Joe was one of them, was tough, tough guy. Obviously a great left hook, known for those fights with Muhammad Ali. But what they don't see is, and this is when I talk about tough guys, and you know, me and you were close for so many years, and people don't realize, I guess, and the people that don't know how close we were, but the real tough guys are the guys like yourself that get in the ring and get dirty in the ring. It's easy for us, or guys like me or Gene, we were out on the street, and you you know, you're fighting, you're getting stabbed, you're getting shot, but it ain't the same as getting in the ring and warring with somebody and training every day. And get your head knocked in. And if you want to be a tough guy, I think you got to follow that path. You agree? I agree 110, man. Hey, hey, Prince, can I ask you some? Um, uh, out of your professional career, who was the um that you would say was your best challenge? Who gave you the best fight you ever had in your career? Oh, uh, I'm gonna say he gave me the best fight because he he injured me earlier by shutting my kidney down. But it had to be Roy Jones. It had to be only because he shut my kidney down. But before my kidney was shut down, I felt like I, I, I was going to blow him out. Wow. Well, if anybody watches that fight, and if they haven't, they need to watch the first couple of rounds until you got your kidney blown out. Is right. Because, uh, and listen, you can never take it. I, I like Roy Jones Jr. He's a hell of a speaker. Right. Good guy. You guys still maintain friendships with him. But the truth is, you had him knocked out until you, got, until you, uh, you busted out your kidney. I thought you were going to take him out early second round. And then I see, you know, we're together day and night. So I seen the difference of you slowing down. I knew something was wrong. Yes. And, and you know, I, and just so you know, a lot of people don't know this, but there's a rule in boxing. It's an unwritten rule. But they say in order to beat the champ, you got to knock him out. Right. Well, I'm going to say this. If you go back and watch me and Roy's fight, he didn't beat me up. He might have been awarded to the victory, but if you look at that fight, he didn't beat me up. So with me becoming in as champion, a lot of people have a whole lot to say about that fight. All I say is, let's just fight again. You know what I'm saying? And I still say the same thing right now to this day. So we were going to fight. But the gentleman who was in the middle helping us put the fight together, I think things fell apart on his end. Did he want to bring that fight into China, actually? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so do, you feel, do you feel that Bernard Hopkins got robbed with Jermaine Taylor? Because Jermaine Taylor didn't beat him. No, and he did not beat Bernard Hopkins. He didn't. He it robbed. was the same case. It right. was the same case. Right. Same case. Well, you can talk like uh, Prince. You know, Bernard had a, a, a hard go at it. When he came out of prison, I mean, and he had the fallout with Don King, just what I said earlier. I mean, they blackballed him out. He, he really had a tough time coming back in. And finally, he overcame it, became the champ. But just like you said, he couldn't even get a room in Atlantic City. I mean, now he's on good terms with Don King later on and years later. But at the time, he couldn't get himself a fight. Forget about a title shot. 
And, you know, and you know better than anybody. You are in the ring with him every day. I mean, yeah. we used to go, to, you know, every day and you train with him. So, uh, I mean, you, you know the talent he had for guys that don't understand you know, boxing. He, he's my favorite fighter. He was beating guys at 52 years old, Bernard Hopkins. He's still, yeah. he, he's still boxing. These guys still could go. It's yes. crazy. Prince is still going. He, and, knocked, he knocked out Esca, Oscar Del Boyer with a body shot, bro. I'll put him right down. Yeah, yes. that guy right there. He was and, that's, the, and that's how he became partners with Oscar. Right. That's right. They, Oscar, they became partners Oscar, in so moved by Bernard's performance against him and how Bernard presented himself that they actually became very close friends and they became partners. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Bernard is still with Golden Boy right now today. Wow. Wow. And, and, and what, what happened to Sugar Shane? Does he still have his company also or no? Sugar Shane still has his promotional company, but is not as busy as some of the main promotional companies out there right now today, but he does have his own promotional company. He does have a promoter's license. He does, So he does have his company still, though. He does have a promotional company. Uh, he does have a promoter's license, but as far as him uh, promoting shows that are widely known, I don't know. Okay. That's as much I could say. So you're still looking to step in the ring a lot? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to see that fight still get had with, with Roy Jones Jr. and yourself. I know. Yeah, I mean, listen, Bobby Ches later on in his career, if you remember, because he fought a Holyfield. I mean, Holyfield. And Bobby came up to, to, to a heavyweight, which, I mean, which is unbelievable also yep. from his weight class. And, uh, you know, Holyfield really took it to him all over the ring. But we know Bobby Ches had one of the best jaws in boxing. And yeah. I, I think he got paid at that time about a million dollars. was a big payday for, for a fight like that. And, right. uh, you know, so at, the shape you're in for the people that don't know, I mean, you, you maintain your shape. You don't drink. You don't drug. You don't stay out late. You're a trainer. You eat well. So for you to get back in the ring, you can fight for a, a lot of years uh, to come. I'd love to see that Roy Jones Jr. fight uh, and yourself again. And I, I hope somebody does something with that fight and, and gets that going. Hey, uh, when, you, when you were in jail, when you were not changing something, when you were in prison, uh, I'm sure you were knocking guys out there, too. Were guys trying, you know, when you were a boxer, or you had to, you know, knock them out a little bit to show them? No, you know what happened in prison? I was just being my regular self, and guys, at first, they didn't know I was a boxer. Because you got to remember, when I was in prison, I was not professional yet. Right. I had, I had a street reputation for boxing, but I was not professional yet. So a lot of guys who gave me respect were some guys who were locked up with me in the juvenile prison. And they knew. And they knew from the juvenile prison. So when I met them in adult prison, they told other guys, but a lot of the other guys didn't believe them, so I wound it up in situations that I wouldn't have been in had those guys <laughs> believed them. Because my demeanor doesn't match my ability. Right, okay. That's similar you know with me. Yeah, that's you know, I've had guys tell me to my face, they can't possibly be talking about you because look, look, this is how you talk. You, right. you, you know, they, I mean, I heard a lot of insults until I started laying hands on people. That's the same thing with me. They they, they looked at me, God, oh, this kid looks like a herb. Then it's too late. They got shot. They got hit with a bat. They got chased up the block. You know, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, guys have the tendency. I mean, hey, at, by the way, X started boxing also in in jail before. Yes. He Pro, he, you know, he was just playing around with his hands in prison, I believe. And somebody said, "Hey, he's got talent." And then he hit the streets and became. But I think the problem in the streets is, Prince. We talk about this. I don't care what neighborhood, what color, what anything. I think guys think it's cool, or they think they're intimidating somebody with their mouth. And when they run into real guys that are uh, are just tough guys, and like yourself, they learn one thing: to be a gentleman. And then, secondly, is to be aggressive and i think they take they took that as a mistake on you know growing up from the streets i mean we grew up in the street you grew up in camden the street and when a guy found out the hard way and then you had a big reputation down in camden everybody knows you're a fighter who you are but uh, initially i remember when two guys tried to rob you you remember that story they tried to rob you and and they just look and you, and you knocked them out and i, I don't think they, they they didn't really see that coming because you just humble and that and, one and, well, yeah, that one can i hear that story what happened Listen, this is what happened. I, I, I was walking to the Chinese store, 
So as I'm walking there, two guys run up to me. They both have bags of marijuana in their hand, and they hand it to me. And I'm I'm like, what's this? He said, you you want to kill her, right? You want to kill her, right? I said, oh, no, man. I said, y'all must don't know this area. He said, what you mean? I said, no, I don't do no smoking, man. He's like, man, come on, man. I don't want to hear that shit. You wanted to what? So I said, serious, bro. I'm not, I don't do that. So it went from that to me sucking my teeth. He said, what you sucking your teeth for? And from that point on, I hooked off. <laughs> and when I hooked off, he went out. But the other guy backed up and started reaching. So I rushed him. And when I rushed him, we was tussling. He was trying to pull his hand out. I was trying to keep his hand in. And I let loose my other hand and came across his chin. He went out. And then I searched him. He had a gun on him. <laughs> I, took, I took it. <laughs> what? what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. So I was like, just that quick. They were strapped. And I didn't even know one of them was strapped. So you know what I mean? Basically, it, it, they had weapons trying to rob you and they all got knocked out. <laughs> Yeah, because they was thinking that I was that I was a customer, right? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> hey, I want to ask you something on uh, an ethnic line because you know I'm Albanian, he's Italian, and I do a lot of talking about the street, and I talk about tough guys are respected by if they're gentlemen by other tough guys, and no one gives a shit when you're on the street what color you are. If you're a tough guy, you're a tough guy. If you're a good guy, you're a good guy. And your respect comes from those things. And it was kind of like the way I met uh, Ali in prison, right? Yeah, we didn't know that, you know, we were all friends. Later on, we find out. But my respect comes from, and I talk about this because a lot of guys talk about the Italian mafia. And I tell them the same thing. Listen, I don't care if you're an Italian mafia. I don't care if you're just a street guy. I don't care if you're involved with the, the Latin kings, if you're uh, blood. Respect comes from the ability as a man to, to respect the other man. And I think that's where, you, you know, when we're talking about yourself, your respect comes from uh, you as a person. And when somebody disrespects you, you're aggressive. You know, obviously, I know that as friends. And, uh, and I, me and Gene talk about this. And what I'm trying to do on these shows is call out the fakers, the big mouths, the guys that are promoting kids to go to the street. The guys yeah. that don't want to get in the ring and use their hand. Or the guys that really weren't on the street getting dirty. Or didn't yeah. lose family members to being killed. So people got to keep it real. Uh, and, and really, that's what I'm trying to do is keep it real so everybody understands what is our message. Just, you know, Prince, we did the other show with Bob Charger. And, you know, and we talk about this on the last show. Uh, keeping it real is telling these kids, man, go to school, do something positive. Get in the ring, do something positive. That ain't your thing, whatever it is. Doesn't got to be fighting to be be respected as a man. Absolutely, absolutely, I, and I I agree with that wholeheartedly, man. Because you got a lot of talented people out here, uh, wa wasting their talent because they won't go and further their talent. You know what I mean? They'll have the talent and it'll just be something good to talk about or, or to do from time to time. But if they really took and put their time and energy and enjoying their talent and uh, nurturing their talent. They could be in a lot, a lot better off than, than what they are when you meet them who passing on the streets. Yeah, well, no doubt. You train? Uh, do you train anybody now, Brad? Uh, do you have kids yeah. in the train them? I, I train. I train little children, and I train predominantly women and little children. Those are my two main people I train, and I work out with, you know, the, uh, the kind of like the teenagers that are around 19 to. 25 I, I train them and box those guys box so i use them a lot of times to box you know to get my rounds out of them because we got a couple of guys that are pretty good a couple of guys who uh made the usa boxing team that could be their uh -huh. hopeful okay we got a real his old trainer is a denny brown his old trainer still his trainer and you know really good friend we're all good friends and denny's down in, in florence street at the gym and they got a bunch of fighters down there, and he works with a bunch of kids, and he's a real positive dude also. And uh, Prince, you, you've been down that gym helping a lot of guys down in that gym. I mean, so you you, you give a lot of positive love, actually, to a lot of kids. And, and really, that's the message, man, follow guys like you. And that's what I'm trying to show them, Prince, is to follow guys like you in the street. Don't follow that nonsense. Right. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and what's good about it is like you, know, you see a guy like you're a role model and kids look up to you, so they'll actually believe what you're saying. You know, it's not like you're practicing, you're preaching some bullshit. You know, you're preaching what you've been through, and you know you've been through everything, so it, it works because they actually could see that you're not bullcrap and you're you're the real deal, and they're gonna they're gonna be inspired by that and say, wow, this is somebody I want to look up to. You know what I mean? So that's why I think it, it it works out for guys like even with us. You know, we were real street guys where guys can actually say, you know, oh, he's not bullcrap and he was really been through this. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I think it works out with people like us, where kids could actually really see what it is and the treachery that we've been through and then the stuff that you went through as well and understand that it's a waste of time. And, you know, uh, street life is dead life, man, you know? Absolutely, man. I see that wholeheartedly. Well, Prince, you've seen what I've been through for the last 30 years. And, yeah, right. And, I mean, you know, and with, with little Ba and your cousin. And, I mean, we've been together since we're kids, literally. So, you know, it's crazy some of the shit that I've been through. And Gene's been through his stuff. He's a lot younger than us. And I think that's really is the message of, uh, man, do something positive. Just right. work. And, and I'm trying to spread that. As, as much as we can and uh, forget about all the murder and the killing because we've all suffered. You know, we suffer. You lost a lot of family members from the street. You spent, yeah. like you said, a good decade plus in prisons. And uh, you, you, you got such a positive message now to kids that. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, I, I want to ask uh, Prince, what, what's your record? What was your professional record? What were you? I'm thir- I got I got 30, 35 fights. I'm 30 and 5. Ooh. Okay. And, 30, and you know something? It's funny because boxing is very, very political. You know, you can be punished in a fight just because you don't knock a guy out. You might beat him, but because you don't knock him out, they'll feel like you should have knocked him out, so we're not going to give you this fight. That happened. That's, that's Johnny mentioned it earlier. It happened with Bernard and Jermaine Teller. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of Prince, when I went to prison, I think that hurt your career a lot because you had Clint Woods you were going to fight back then, back in the day. And uh, just what you said, it's political. And some of the doors could have been open to you. My situation. 30 and 30 and five. That's some record, man. That's how many KOs did you have? Yeah, I I have 15 KOs. Wow. All right, man. You had a nice career. Hey, a lot of those KOs were to the body. I mean, listen, Crazy. there's one guy that I used to love as a fighter, and you know this, Marvin Hagler, greatest body right. puncher, I, I said, gentleman, low-keyed, and I think he never got his due either, really, for how good he was, man. No, he, he just did. never 